Well, you found uh, five tips to solving any geometry proof, five tips to finding any geometry proof. And so, hey, there, you know what? There's just a few things that if you understand them and you can follow these tips, it'll make the geometric proof a little bit easier. All right, all geometry proofs are challenging in that you've got to think. But there are some things that you can do to make life easier. All right, so five tips to solving any geometry proof. Tip number one, hey, know the postulates, theorems, and definitions. And you know what? I need to add to that as well. Don't forget the properties. The properties. Look, here's the reality. You have got to know the postulates. You've got to know the theorems. You've got to know the definitions. And you've got to know the properties. You just have to. You just have to. Uh, these are things that you need to keep reviewing. You need to keep having in your mind. And here's the reality. To do a proof, you need thoughts in your mind. Where do the thoughts in your mind come from? They come from the postulates, from the theorems, from the definitions, from the properties. These give you the thoughts of the proof. If you don't have them in your head, then you're going to be in trouble. Now, when I taught geometry, I printed out a sheet for every student. It listed all the postulates, all the theorems. It listed the key definitions of the course, and it also listed in a section the properties. This was a quick reference sheet, and the students could look at it and go through and refresh their memory on the postulates, theorems, definitions, and properties. Because again, these are the thoughts that you need to be able to write the proof. So listen, I can't state more emphatically or emphatically enough that in order for you to be able to write a geometric proof, you have to have the thoughts necessary. And where do those thoughts come from? The postulates, theorems, definitions, and properties. So maybe you don't have that sheet. You do have a book. The book probably lists all your postulates and theorems, hopefully in order. The uh, book should also have an area where you can look up definitions. And there should be somewhere a, a uh, concise list of your properties. You need to refer to these often when doing proofs. It's really the starting point. You got to know your postulates. You got to know your theorems. You got to know your definitions. You've got to know your properties. You'll see that in a moment when we do our proof here. Tip number two, label the drawing. Hey, label the drawing. It's a big tip. It's an important tip. So I've got a proof down here. It says given line segment SA is parallel line segment TB and O is the midpoint of AB. Okay, it's not a ton of labeling on this opening proof, but there is some. This is what I like to do. I like to go through and extend line SA, and I like to go through and extend line TB, again, showing me the parallel lines. That's important. Also then, O is the midpoint. And I'm just going to put a dot there for O and give that little midpoint, my midpoint symbol there. OK? So, but label the drawing. When you have congruent angles, mark the angles as congruent. When you have congruent sides, mark the sides as congruent. The picture is a visual to help you to think through the proof. Label the drawing. Label the drawing label the drawing. All right, tip number three, know where you're going. You got to know where you're going in any geometric proof. You just have to know where you're going. You know, if I said get in a car and go to Oshkosh, these days you'd probably get there because you'd get in your car, you'd punch it into your GPS and off you would go. But in reality, in the old days, you had no earthly idea where Oshkosh was. You'd never get there. You'd never find it. If you didn't know it was in Wisconsin, you'd never head there. Look, you got to know where you're going. You got to know where you're going. You've got to know where you're going. So you might say, well, where are we going? You're going toward what you're trying to prove, right? In this example, here, let me just focus it here. If I get it, oh, I'm not working. All right, let's do this. So where are we heading? In this proof, we're trying to head toward triangle TOB is congruent to triangle SOA. There we go. All right. That's where we're heading. We're supposed to prove triangle TOB is congruent to triangle SOA. It's important to know where you're going. So let me tell you, this is my thought then. Because I know where I'm going, I always in my proof come down at the bottom 
I usually give myself enough space. And sometimes it's, it's further down than it needs to be, and that's okay. But I write where I'm going. Triangle TOB is congruent to triangle SOA. Now, there's no number there because I don't know how many steps it's going to take to get there. I don't know. I don't know how many steps it'll take to get from the given to what I'm trying to prove. But I do know that's where I'm going. But here's the key. All right, think about it. I have to prove two triangles to be congruent. Now, at this point in our geometry, we would have learned four ways of, true, of proving two triangles to be congruent. So see, again, you got to know your postulates. You got to know your theorems. So can you think of any ways of proving two triangles to be congruent? I hope you can. I'll give you a first one. How about SAS, side angle side, right? If the side of one triangle, if the two sides of one triangle and the included angle are congruent to the corresponding two sides and included angle of a second triangle, then the two triangles are congruent, right? Side angle side. Can you think of another one? All right. Were you thinking side, side, side? If three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. Side, side, side. How about angle, side, angle? If two angles of one triangle and the included side are congruent to the two angles and the included side of the second triangle, then the triangles are congruent. Hey, there's one more. One more. Do you know it? How about angle, angle, side? If two angles of one triangle and a third and a side are congruent to two angles of another triangle and a side, then the two triangles are congruent. Look, that's where we're heading. That's where we're going. We have to prove two triangles congruent. What means do we have of proving two triangles congruent? We've got side, angle, side, 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 angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side. Those are the four possibilities. It's going to be one of those four. That's where we're heading. So that's an important tip. Tip number three, know where you are going. Know where you are going. you got to know where you're going or you'll never get there. So let's quickly recap. Number one, know your postulate theorems, definitions, and properties. Number two, label the drawing. Number three, know where you're going. All right, number four gets used all the time. The given is always given for a reason. The given is always given for a reason. Let's go back down to our proof. So as you know, to start a proof, statement number one is going to be your given information. All right, it's basically a rewrite. Line segment SA is parallel of line segment TB, and O is the midpoint of AB. And of course, reason is the ever popular given. Okay, but here's the point. The given is always given for a reason. I have two parts to the given, right? There are two things here. I have parallel and I have midpoint. I have parallel and I have midpoint. And I can use those two things. The, the given's always given for a reason. Now. We slide down a little bit here. Remember where we're heading. We're heading toward side, angle, side, 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 angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side. We are trying to get angles congruent and sides congruent. That's what we're trying to do. So can I use parallel to do that? Well, again, tip number one, you've got to know your postulates, theorems, definitions, and properties. So I look at my drawing. I see my blue parallel lines. Do you see my blue parallel lines? I see the blue parallel lines. You know what else I see? I see a transversal. Do you see that transversal? And you know what else? Because I know my postulates and theorems, I know that, whoops, <laughs> can't completely circle. Oh, I'm trying to get away with it. I know that angle two, let me do it this way. I know that angle two is congruent to angle five, right? Because I know the theorem that the alternate interior angles of parallel lines are congruent. So I know that angle 5 is congruent to angle 2. But you know what? That's not the only thing. Look, here's another transversal of these two parallel lines right there. You see that? So therefore, then, here's another pair of alternate interior angles, right? So not only can I say angle 5 is congruent to angle 2, 
I can also say angle 6 is congruent to angle 1. You follow? So angle 6, let me get rid of this again, is congruent to angle 1. So again, what would be the reason? Now again, you got to know your definitions. You got to know your postulates. You got to know your theorems, right? And we know that given two parallel lines, we've got a uh, we've got a postulate that says the alternate interior angles are congruent, and therefore that's our reasoning. Alternate interior angles are congruent. Again, if if your teacher wants you to give a little bit more, then you'd give a little bit more, right? But given parallel lines, the alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay, now let's go back to the labeling aspect. So I'm going to label. I have five congruent to two, right? Five congruent to two. And I'm going to come over to my proof, and I'm going to put a little A for angle. Ooh. What else? I'm going to use a little color here. I have angle one congruent to angle six. Angle one congruent to angle six. And I have a second angle. Now, they both use the same reasoning, and so I went that way. Right? So now I have two angles. I'm looking, where am I heading, right? You're always thinking, where am I heading? Where am I heading? Where am I heading? Uh, how about angle side angle looks promising, doesn't it? If I can get line segment AS congruent to line segment TB, that would be nice if I can get there. Um, there's no such thing as angle, 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 by the way. You might say, well, let me say angle 3 and angle 4 are congruent because you know your theorems and you know that vertical angles are congruent um, and you know your postulates. You, you know uh, vertical angles are congruent. Well, there's no such thing as angle, 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 right? We've already taken care of that in the beginning by stating where we're heading. There's no angle, angle, angle. But there is an angle side angle, and there's an angle angle side, and who knows that maybe we still might use side angle side. So we got a couple possibilities going. Obviously, uh, the more viable ones seem to be angle side angle and angle angle side. Okay, so let's go back to tip number four. The given is always given for a reason. The given is always given for a reason. And so let's go back to our given. What else is in the given? Hey, we're given that um, O is the midpoint of AB. O is the midpoint of AB. Wait a minute. Think back to midpoint. That's a definition. Do I know my definitions? I hope you know your definitions. Do you know what the definition of midpoint says? I hope you do. Because here's what it says. If O is the midpoint of AB, then AO equals OB. AO equals OB. Again, what's the reason? This is simply a definition. Definition of midpoint. Now, at this point, some students want to end the proof and say that the two triangles are congruent. It's not time to end the proof yet. I have already shown one angle of one triangle congruent to another, a second angle of one triangle congruent to the corresponding of another, but I have yet to prove a side congruent. And again, to be a, you know, if you're going to be technical and some teachers uh, don't want you to be as technical, I always wanted my students to be technical. We really need to go from equal, right? A to O is a distance. Distance from A to O equals the distance from O to B. And therefore, we need to end up with congruent, but that's an easy task, right? We can go and say line segment AO is congruent to line segment OB. And again, because you know your definitions, I can't stress enough, you've got to know the postulates, theorems, definitions, and properties. How can you have the thoughts to do a proof if you don't know the stuff to think? you got to know the stuff to think. All right, that's just a definition. It's a definition of congruent. And again, I'm going to come back here now, and I'm going to label. I now have a side, and I'm going to label my drawing. I have this side congruent to this side. Hey, look what I have. Look back at the drawing. Angle, angle, side. I've got angle, angle, side, don't I? I absolutely do. You know what that means. Proof's done. 
I am done now. I now have proven that triangle TOB is got congruent to triangle SOA by angle angle side. And the proof's completed. Now I will say this, some that are very, very technical would want you to switch around your order here and here. Okay, at least one of them. Because if you look and, and sometimes even use the symmetric property, switch sides, because in your triangles, OB is on the left and OA is on the right. So one, they'd want you to use symmetric to get the OB on the left and the AO on the right. And then they'd like you to use definition of, of distance to switch from AO to OA. Again, if your teacher wants you to be that technical, I think that's great. If you're going to end up being a lawyer one day, uh, that's very good for you. Because look, here's the reality. Good lawyers state the simplistic. Good lawyers tell the jury things that they should already know, and you would assume they know, but you're going to tell them anyhow because you're going to make sure they know. And so I never have a problem with a teacher being very, very technical there. I think it's a good thing. Hey, there we are. We just did a proof. Five-stepper. And you know what we did? It basically was the given. The given got us all the way to the end because we realized the given's always given for a reason. And we knew where we were heading. And there we were. Now, again, I understand you got to know the postulates, theorems, definitions, and properties if you're going to get their property. Now, you might say, hey, uh, Mr. S, you didn't even get to number five. Yeah, I know I didn't. Because you know what? Number five doesn't come to play in every proof. It doesn't. So what are these five tips for solving any geometric proof? Know the postulates, theorems, definitions, and properties. Label a drawing. Know where you're going. The given is always given for a reason. And here's number five, and I'll show you this one on another video. But uh, number five is this. If stuck, look to introduce part of what you are proving. If stuck, look to introduce part of what you're proving. Again, it's hard to explain without uh, showing you an illustration, and so I'm going to do a video on that one next. But look, five tips will really get you going in proofs and will help you. All right, have a great day.